From the BSNBCS studios, this is your morning news with Mia Brown and Mai Garcia. Happy Halloween, BSNBCS. Today is Monday, October 31st, 2023. Welcome to the Fall Fest episode of BSNBCS 82 News. My name is Mia Brown. And I am Maya Garcia. Happy Halloween and thanks for joining us. Let's head right into the news. <music> Local news, as October ends, so does our BSNPCS anti-bullying campaign. This month, we have explored as a BSNPCS community the effects bullying has on our community. Bullying is a repeated, unwanted, aggressive behavior that involves a real perceived power of imbalance. Even though we all have heard of bullying, many students are aware of the different types of bullying. There are four main types of bullying, physical, verbal, social, and cyber. In connection with our Thrive value, humanitas, which means kindness, is the most important Thrive value when speaking about relationships with others. Using the value of humanitas is always thinking about ways to be kind to the people around you. In national news, this month we celebrate the Day of the Dead, El Día de los Muertos, a Mexican holiday where families welcome back the souls of their deceased relatives for a brief reunion that includes lots of delicious food, drinks, and celebration. A blend of Mesoamerican ritual, European religion, and Spanish culture, the holiday is celebrated each year from October 31st to November 2nd. While October 31st is Halloween, November 2nd is All Souls Day or the Day of the Dead. According to tradition, the gates of heaven are opened at midnight on October 31st, and the spirits of children can rejoin their families for 24 hours. In 1980s, the popularity began to spread globally. In recent years, the traditions has developed even more due to its visibility in pop culture and its growing popularity in the United States. More than 36 million people identified as having a Mexican ancestor. Now for sports with Shine Sutton. Hi, I'm Shine Sutton with your sports news. Let's keep a close watch for our BSNBCS flag football team who have opened up their football season. They played against Children's Charter 2 School on Saturday, October 7th. Remember, this is a new team with novice football players. With that being said, we celebrate them scoring their first eight points. This is Brooklyn-based team is going currently undergoing. Intense training and skill development, sportsmanship, and game plans. They are led by our prophilic coaches, Steel. Richard, and Corey. Let's support our flag football team. Go Bulldogs! In NFL football, News Week 5 captured a nail-biting match between Green Bay Packers as the Las Vegas Raiders on Indigenous People's Day was like a game of tag as the points were passed around by each team for three quarters of the game. In the final quarter, Josh Jacobs' two-yard run and Daniel Clarkson's kick scored a touchdown. Teamwork makes the dream work. The Las Vegas Raiders emerged winners when the game over whistle was blown in the 17-13 points match. Follow your favorite NBL on NFL, CBN, and ESPN. The games continue. Thanks, Shine, for that intriguing report. I'll be sure to ask my parents if we can go on Saturdays to Lincoln Terrace Park to watch our team play. Let's go Bulldogs! That's right, Maya. Okay, guys, it's that time again. Time for what you ask? The riddle of the week, of course. Hi, I'm Alea Thompson with your riddle of the week. Are you ready? What can you break even if you never pick it up or touch it? Any good guesses? What am I? Have your teachers send your answers to Ms. V. Jones. That's your riddle of the week. Good morning, BSNBCS. My name is Ms. Jones, the SGA advisor, and I am here with your announcements. First announcements, the next upcoming Spirit Day will be Throwback Day. So go in those closets and pull out those Afro wigs, those bell bottoms, those Adidas track suits, Kangos, and don't forget those jerseys. Can't wait to see what your outfits are going to look like. Last but certainly not least, the SGA elections. And the results 
R N. Drum roll, please. For President, Emily Soto. Vice President, Samuel Clark. Sergeant at Arms, Raymond Gutierrez. Treasurer, Elian Rodriguez. Secretary, Dakota Lee. And last but certainly not least, Chloe Williams as SGA Student Advisor. Let's give it up for all of those winners. And I cannot wait to see the great things that they are going to do this year. Once again, congratulations to all the winners. And to those who did not get elected, congratulations to you because you worked hard to get where you are. And those are your SGA announcements. My name is Shamor for London with your forecast. Let's take a look at what's happening in the world this week. Today we'll have a high of 55 degrees with a low of 40 degrees. The humidity will be at 56% today. The storm will rise at 7.25 a.m. and set at 5.53 p.m. Here's what you expect from your seven-day forecast. This week, our temperatures are in the 40s. Thursday, we can look forward to mostly sunny skies. However, the rest of the week are partly cloudy. So make sure you bring out those light jackets, especially in the morning for that fall chill. That's your seven day forecast. Mia, back to you. Amazing. We have some great mild temperatures headed our way this week. Let's enjoy the sunshine while we still can. Let's hear our Spanish recap from Ashley and Isabel. A medida que termina octubre, también termina nuestra campaña anti-bullying de BSN-BCS. Este mes hemos explorado como comunidad BSN-BCS los efectos que tiene el acoso en nuestra comunidad. La intimidación es un comportamiento agresivo no deseado y repetido que implica un desequilibrio de poder real o percibido. Aunque todos hemos oído hablar del acoso escolar, muchos estudiantes no conocen los diferentes tipos de acoso. Como hablamos en el último programa, existen cuatro tipos principales de acoso. Físico, verbal, social y cibernético. En conexión con nuestro valor de prosperación humanitus, que significa bondad. Humanitus es el valor de prosperación más importante cuando se habla de relaciones con los demás. En Noticias Nacionales, este mes celebramos el Día de los Muertos. El Día de los Muertos, un feriado mexicano donde las familias reciben las armas de sus familiares fallecidos para una breve reunión que incluye comida, bebida y celebración. Esta festividad, una mezcla ritual mesoamericano, religión europea y cultura española, se celebra cada año del 31 de octubre al 2 de noviembre, mientras que el 31 de octubre es Halloween. El 2 de noviembre es el día de todos los difuntos o el día de los muertos. Según la tradición, las puertas del cielo se abren a la medianoche del 31 de octubre y los espíritus de los niños pueden reunirse con sus familiares durante 24 horas. This has been your Spanish recap. I'm Isabel. And I'm Ashley. See you next time. Back to you, Mia. Joining us now are our in-the-field reporter, Emily Soto. Good morning, BSNBCS viewers. I'm Emily Soto, and joining me today is Ever Lewis, the esteemed political anchor at Spectrum News and New York One, and the host of the popular weekly program Inside City Hall at 7 p.m. Mr. Lewis boasts an impressive educational background with degrees from prestigious institutions such as Harvard and Yale. He is renowned for his extensive experiences in interviewing top political and cultural leaders and has moderated over two dozen debates. Encompassing races for major, public advocate, city and state controller, a state attorney general, and the U.S. Senate. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Errol Lewis to our program. Now, how has your education been instrumental in the shaping of your career, and what valuable insights can you share with the aspiring students at BSNBCS? Well, I can tell you, uh, very nice to meet you, Emily. Um, I can tell you that the, the uh, educational experience I got really helped prepare me um, because there's nothing like going in depth, in my case, in depth in politics and understanding a lot of it, a lot of political history, um, talking with and about uh, political leaders. 
so that when I went to interview them, in many cases, I had already studied the people that I was interviewing. So, uh, you know, when I met Jesse Jackson, for example, I had read about and learned about the history of the civil rights movement. So I could ask him things about his own life. Um, and even though those things happened when I was a child, that, that kind of preparation is really valuable. And education teaches you how to do that, how to process a lot of information really quickly, like studying for a test, you get all the information and you read it as quickly as you can and get ready to do your interview. There's an African proverb that asserts, it takes a village to raise a child. Could you elaborate on who play a role in your village? And how has that community molded your character and career? Well, the, the first uh, part of the village, of course, is your family. And uh, I had three older sisters plus my mom and, and dad. And what I remember very vividly is sitting around a table and just talking about everything that was going on in the world. You know, my parents really sort of led me towards what became my career. I used to go down um, the hill every where I lived and uh, get the newspaper from my father. He was an NYPD officer and he would read the New York Times and the Daily News and I went to buy them for him and I could keep the change and buy comic books. And so I did that every week and then little by little, I started reading the newspapers, not just the comic books. And it turned out actually they were somewhat similar. A lot of drama, yeah. good guys, bad guys, a lot of fighting going on. You have to tune in next week to see what happens. It really is kind of similar. Um, but it was, it was an, an incredible environment. One other thing, talking to you about the village, we had a dentist um, and he had all of these magazines all over the place for people to read while they were waiting to go in. And he was going to throw them all out. And my mother said, give them to me. She brought home a whole box. And it was years worth of Time Magazine, Newsweek Magazine, New York Magazine, which I now write for. And she gave them all to me. So I was a kid. And this is, again, just like reading the comic books. You know, I would lay them in order, you know, because one week, you know, you'd have the date on it. And I would just read through all of it. And I got an amazing education. So, I mean, when there were people there to just give you the information and and um, uh, pick up on what you might be interested in and expose you to a lot of things. That's really what makes the, the biggest difference. What drives you to exceed the boundaries of conventional expectations? What is the source of your motivation? Uh, that's, a, that's a very good question. <laughs> um, uh, look, if, if you, you, you make a decision, I made a decision pretty early on, probably around your age, that you know, the things that I saw in front of me, um, the civil rights movement, Martin Luther King, um, you know, he was killed when I was in first grade. I mean, I, I, I do remember some parts of what went on here. Um, you know, the, the real motivation is wanting to see the world become a better place, number one. And number two, understanding that for the position of, of our people, my people in this country, you either, you either fight and make progress or you have a life of subordination ahead of you, you know, cultural subordination, political, economic. It's a really bad scene unless you do something. I mean, that's, you know, so my generation was born in struggle. And that to me is just a permanent motivation and not one you, that you really have a choice with. You know, I, I've seen people say, oh, I don't want anything to do with politics. And I have to tell them, it's like, listen, you may think you're through with politics. Politics is not through with you. Uh, and you can lose everything you have and things you didn't even realize you could lose if you are not aware and engaged and involved. And so that's the, that's the core motivation. Now, I happen to enjoy it, you know, so I've taken it maybe a little further than some other people would. But I think everybody has to be motivated by trying to keep your family, your community, and yourself safe, prosperous, with a bright future. Of course. As our time draws to a close, I would like to express my gratitude to Mr. Lewis for sharing his invaluable insights with us today. I'm Emily Soto, and this has been a special News 82 report. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thanks, Emily, for that awesome segment. Mr. Lewis is such a great inspiration to us all. Yeah, it was so interesting how he talked about the village he was a part of as a child. And now, let's end our broadcast the way we always do, with a super duper fun affirmation time. What if it's too hard? I'm gonna push through. What if you're afraid? I'm gonna push through. What if you don't know? I'm gonna push through. What if you're too young? That's not true. What if you're not good enough? That's not true. What if you're not strong enough? That's not true. Tell me why. I can do anything I put my mind to. Thanks for the affirmation.
affirmation. Remember, you can use this affirmation to encourage yourself whenever you need it. As always, we'll be reciting this affirmation every broadcast. Well, that's our show. Happy Fall Fest to everyone, and enjoy the fun. This has been Maya and Mia bringing you the latest news around the globe. Thank you for being with us. Have, Have a thrilling, thrilling time. time.